Welcome back to Top 5 Scary. I'm your host, Kyle McWaters. Every day there's something new, isn't there? Old ISS videos, someone's shaky phone of a balloon that just zips through a portal, and of course, some press conferences with the real deal earlier this year. Here's the top five terrifying alien sightings NASA tried to cover up. Number five, Al Warden. American test pilot, engineer, and NASA astronaut Alfred Merrill Warden was the module pilot for the Apollo 15 lunar mission in 1971. One of the 24 people who have flown to the moon. Woohoo! He's got a couple of firsts though. He orbited it 74 times in the command module. He was the first to drive a moon car. After Apollo 15 reached lunar orbit and his crewmates departed and Warden spent three days alone in his module. That's terrifying. Traveling the furthest out from any other human. After he returned, the crew and him became involved in a NASA controversy, however. Not over leaked alien info, but over postage stamps they had taken to the moon. Yeah, big no-no, uh, apparently. They were reprimanded by NASA and did not fly in space again. Warden remained at NASA until 1975, then entered a private sector. And then it gets weird. On a British television morning show, Al Warden started talking about some interesting stuff. They asked him, why should we keep going back to the moon? He paused and replied, survival. Survival of our species. Warden also rejected the notion that humans could colonize planets within our solar system, calling them unsustainable. Then he claims he knows where to find habitable planets. When pressed on aliens, if he believes them or not, he said, yes. You know, I've been asked that question hundreds of times, yeah. We are the aliens though. We just think there's somebody else. But we were the ones who came from somewhere else because somebody else had to survive. They got in their little spaceship and they came here and they landed and they started civilization here. And if you don't believe me, go get books on the ancient Sumerians and see what they have to say about it. They'll tell you right up front, end quote. <laughs> okay, when you hear an astronaut say that, kind of jarring, kind of jarring. Number four, Roswell. As always, if you dig what we do here on Top 5 Scary, make sure you hit that like button. Birth of the UAP phenomenon, 1945, the US's first nuclear explosion. 1946, 1946, first underwater nuclear explosion. 1947, the first crash flying saucer. Coincidence? I think not. Especially since they've been known to hover around nuclear bases. Probably for the better. Humans are kind of the worst. Local rancher Mac Brazel finds the wreckage on his property in Lincoln County, New Mexico. Sheriff Wilcock shows RAAF's commanding officer, Colonel Blanchard, the materials. And during the night, the Air Force combs the entirety of the property, apparently harboring two small injured alien bodies. Taking them, of course, to Kirtland Air Force Base, New Mexico that night. And the very next morning, the Roswell Air Force makes a statement claiming they have recovered a crashed flying disc in local newspapers. Boom! History, baby! Photographs of Jesse Marcel, the head intelligence officer who investigated and recovered some of the debris. The very next day, the Army retracts their statement and all of a sudden, a high altitude weather balloon. Can you believe that, huh? <laughs> AKA the birth of a conspiracy theory. Nuclear fission explosions, weather balloons. Something's not adding up here. Number three, Edgar Mitchell. Edgar Dean Mitchell was a US Navy officer, aviator, test pilot, engineer, NASA astronaut, and of course, a ufologist. Ufology is the pseudo term for somebody who studies the UFO phenomenon. I don't think there's a degree you can get that in. If so, I'm signing up. What school? What school, sorry? He was the lunar module pilot of the Apollo 14 in 1971 and spent nine hours working on the lunar surface. He was the sixth person to walk on the moon. Yeah, he was walking while Warden was up there drifting in the currents of space. Mitchell publicly expressed his opinions and that he was sure that there were thousands of UFOs recorded since the early 1940s belonging to other planets. Thousands. Dateline NBC conducted an interview with Mitchell in 1996. He talked about meeting with officials from three different countries who claimed that they had met extraterrestrials in person. Quote, the evidence for alien contact was very strong and classified by governments who were covering up visitations and existence of alien bodies in places such as Roswell, New Mexico. Mitchell's book, The Way of the Explorer, discusses his journey. In 2004, he told the St. Petersburg Times that the US government was studying alien bodies and that this group had specifically stopped briefing US presidents since the 1960s. He said, quote, we all know that UFOs are real. Now, the question is, where do they come from? In 2008, Mitchell then was interviewed and claimed that Roswell crash was in fact the aliens that had contacted humans several times, but that the government had hidden the truth for more than 60 years. Scary stuff, scary stuff. He sadly passed in 2016. If we just reread the credentials alone, 
just one more time. Number two, James McDivitt. James Alton McDivitt is an American test pilot, Air Force pilot, engineer, and NASA astronaut who flew in both the Gemini and Apollo programs. After graduating first in his class with a Bachelor of Science degree in Aeronautical Engineering, he qualified as a test pilot at the Air Force. In 1962, McDivitt was selected by NASA for the Gemini 4 mission. In 1965, he saw, filmed, and photographed an object which approached the Gemini 4 as they were orbiting Earth. Over Hawaii, a craft of some sort. The UFO had a long arm sticking out of it. Here's what Major James McDivitt said. I was flying with Ed White. He was sleeping at the time, so I don't have anybody to verify this story, but we were drifting in space when suddenly an object appeared in the window. It's a cylindrical object, white. It had a long arm that stuck out of the side. The film was sent back to NASA and reviewed by some NASA film technicians. One of them selected what he thought was what they were talking about, at least before I had the chance to review it, and it was not the picture. It was a picture of a sun reflection on the window. So what were the pictures that he was talking about? In 1975, McDivitt said, I never made a big deal out of it. It was something I definitely couldn't identify. It looked like a beer can with a pencil sticking out of it. Yeah, I would eventually give up on that too if those were my credentials and people were like, yeah, right, James. When somebody has like 25 years of designing and flying space shuttles around, when they say, hey guys, I'm seeing something up here. It's not like, oh, James, huh, clean those old specs, would you? Yuck, yuck. Houston, we have a problem. And number one, Gordon Cooper. Leroy Gordon Cooper Jr., an American aerospace engineer, test pilot, U.S. Air Force pilot, and the youngest of the seven original astronauts in Project Mercury, the first human space program in the United States. You know the pictures. It looks like they're wearing a tinfoil suit, you know? Old school, old school. After service as a fighter pilot in World War II, he qualified as a test pilot in 1956 and then was selected as an astronaut in 1959. In 1963, Cooper piloted the longest and last Mercury spaceflight, Mercury Atlas 9, 34 hours in space. The first American to spend an entire day in space, the first person to sleep in space, and the last American launched on a solo orbit mission. In Cooper's autobiography, Leap of Faith, co-authored by Bruce Henderson, he recounted his experiences with the Air Force and NASA and an alleged UFO conspiracy. Cooper claimed to have seen his first UFO while flying over Germany, then saw them land in a dry lake bed. Cooper claimed up until his death that the US was indeed covering up UFOs. He said that there were hundreds of reports made by his fellow pilots, many coming from the military pilots on radar. In his memoirs, Cooper wrote that he had seen unexplained aircrafts tons in his career, and that in 1978, he actually testified before the United Nations on the topic. He sadly passed in 2004. He was such a strong advocate for disclosure, and all of these astronauts are remembered as putting their neck and name out on the line for some truth. But I mean, those UFO enthusiasts, huh? <laughs> They're all wackos, right? Right? Hey, we hope you enjoyed that video. I've been Kyle McWaters. You've been creeped out. As always, stay spooky, everybody.